Russia has now defaulted on its foreign debt. This is the first time it's happened since 1918. Russia has been unable to make a $100 million interest payment that it owed to its foreign lenders. This obviously looks bad for Russia, but is the situation as dire as it seems? Is it the case that Russia is unable and unwilling to pay its debt, or is it simply that they were prevented from doing so? That's what I'm going to look at in this video. And I'm going to go through what's happened with this default and what it means, if anything, for Russia's economy going forward. And of course, as always, if you have any thoughts about what's going on with Russia or what's going on with the global economy, let me know that in the comments below. So let's start off by looking at what's happened with the default. Well, Russia, like many countries, has foreign denominated debt, denominated in this case in euros or US dollars or whatever the case might be. In Russia's case, they have about $453 billion worth of foreign denominated debt. On this debt, they have to make interest payments, much like if you had a home loan or a car loan or any other loan, really. So they need to make interest payments over time. Russia needed to make a $100 million interest payment toward the end of May. However, they were unable to do so for reasons that I'm going to get to in a second. They had a 30-day grace period to make this interest payment before they technically went into default. Russia was not able to make this interest payment, so now Russia is in default. So why is it that they couldn't make this payment? Did Russia refuse to? Were they unable to? What was the case? Well, it turns out Russia actually wanted to make this payment. Russia has been diligently making their foreign denominated debt payments over time. This is despite the sanctions that have existed. Furthermore, Russia has the money to do so. In foreign currency reserves, it has about 582 billion US dollars in foreign currency reserves. Remember, they have 453 billion in debt, so they can easily make any of these foreign payments if they are allowed to do so. And this is where the catch is. You see, with Russia's foreign reserves, they aren't able to touch those really. They can only touch them if the United States or whichever country they're in gives them a special exemption to be able to do that. Heretofore, the United States had allowed Russia to touch those foreign currency reserves to make payments to their lenders. However, the US stopped allowing them to do this. In essence, the US stopped allowing Russia to make its foreign debt payments. Basically, the US here forced Russia into default. And Europe is broadly aligned with this. Basically, Russia was now unable to touch its foreign currency reserves to make these debt payments, thereby forcing them to default on their debt. It wasn't because Russia couldn't afford to pay. It wasn't because Russia didn't want to pay. Indeed, Russia can afford to and does want to. It's because they simply weren't allowed to pay. And hence why Russia has gone into default here. As I indicated, this is the first time it's happened since 1918. In 1918, the Bolsheviks came in after the Russian Revolution, and they therefore refused to pay the debt that the old Tsarist regime had taken out. So let's look at what this means for lenders. Well, for lenders, this doesn't mean a huge amount. It's obviously not good news that they weren't being paid by Russia. However, foreign denominated debt for Russia was already trading at pennies in the dollar. People already expected a high risk of a default and already expected a high risk the Russia might not be able to pay off the debt. Now, the lenders have about three years to pursue Russia over this. And during that time period, it's quite possible the conflict will resolve itself, or there'll be some resolution and perhaps a detente reached. However, at this point, there's not really very much the lenders can do. They can try to pursue Russia later on, and Russia will quite possibly be willing to pay those lenders. However, they're not really going to be able to do very much at the moment. Now, Russia is already largely frozen out of the foreign borrowing market at the moment. The debt that already exists is on already issued debt, not new debt. So Russia is largely unable to borrow in international markets now, regardless. So in many respects, this has a limited impact on financial markets. It's limited to the people who already had lent to Russia and or held bonds that Russia had issued. Many of those bonds are already trading at steep discounts, and some of those lenders are going to have recourse when this whole conflict resolves. And they might try to litigate over this regardless, to try to force a resolution to allow Russia to pay. We also have the issue of insurance, of course, because many of the people with these bonds will also own credit default swaps. So they might actually be able to get a payout from the people who have effectively insured against this default. That, however, is likely to go into a degree of litigation to determine exactly what constitutes a default, technically speaking, 
and when exactly those credit default swaps would ultimately pay out. But at the moment, there's relatively little resolution that can be met. What then does this mean for Russia? Well, Russia, like I've said, is frozen out of foreign borrowing markets at the moment. So this really has relatively little effect on Russia. If Russia already couldn't borrow, then a worsening in their borrowing situation is hardly going to make any difference, because they couldn't borrow anyway. Furthermore, Russia would largely be issuing future debt in rubles and or going to other markets that are going, not going to be subject to US sanctions. For example, trying to borrow in China as an example, or borrow through other various markets. So this is unlikely to have a significant effect on Russia at all, because people are already pricing this in and only new news moves markets, but also because Russia would be borrowing in rubles going forward regardless. The next question is, is this because Russia's economy is bad? Does this show that sanctions are working? Is the fact that they've defaulted showing us that sanctions are causing so much damage that Russia's on its knees and about to collapse? In short, no. Russia is defaulted because they weren't allowed to make a payment. Furthermore, Russia is experiencing an uplift in the dollar amount of revenue it's getting from oil because oil prices have gone up significantly. They're still exporting a ton of oil to China and India and other markets that have absorbed much of the oil that Europe is not able to or allowed to take up. So in essence, Russia is still selling a lot of oil, still selling it at high prices, still selling some oil to Europe anyway, and the only real effect here has been a slight reduction in the price per barrel that they're able to sell things at. So indeed, they've actually gotten much more of a trade surplus than they had. That said, Russia's imports have collapsed. Russia's gotten less access to foreign goods and services. For example, many essential medicines and the like are unable to get into Russia, or at least not get in there very easily. But Russia's economy isn't doing super well. GDP growth forecasts have declined in Russia. Russia has significant inflation, and Russia's imports have collapsed because people aren't able to sell many things to Russia. Many foreign companies have also pulled out of Russia. But we're not seeing Russia's economy fall off the edge of a cliff at the moment. We're not seeing Russia's economy crater. We're just seeing damage. It's as if there's a slow bleed going on that is continuing to affect Russia's economy over time, as opposed to a short, blunt catastrophe right now. That at least seems to be what's happening in Russia, given the strength of the ruble, which admittedly is a little bit artificial, given the strength of their exports, and given the fact that the economy is still plodding along. But like I said, there is a slow bleed in the economy. It is worsening, and the state is taking more and more control over various things. So it is going back toward even more a retrograde economy than it was beforehand. So where does this leave us? Well, effectively, Russia is willing to pay its debt. It has the money to do so. It's just not allowed to do so. So this tells us that Russia is in a slightly difficult and isolated position, but its economy is not necessarily created, and people had already factored in this when buying many of Russia's bonds. So really, it is just news that we already kind of knew about and were expecting that is now just catalyzed and come to fruition. Nevertheless, if you have any thoughts about what's going on with Russia's economy or with this default, let me know that in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel.